Hello, I'm Michael Glass from michaelglass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our video, you want to start off with our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is only your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So this is our stock market technical analysis trading plan. In our video, we'll look at the past week's economic calendar and also look forward to next week. We'll see what happened as far as the most recent price action to identify key support and resistance price levels. We're going to look at the charts of the market leaders, Apple, Google, Goldman Sachs, Priceline. We'll take a look at those. We'll look at the dollar, gold, and crude oil charts to see if there's any leading sentiment. And finally, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. As we begin to look at the week that was, we can see that we had a split market. The NASDAQ and S&P 500 fell while the Dow Jones rose. For overall, we are still down for the year at least about 6%. Uh, all the way up to two digits, 10% for the S&P 500. Uh, this was another down week for the market. That means eight out of the last 10 weeks ended lower. So we ended September being down 7%, and for the quarter, we're down 14%. We did have some overseas news. Germany did approve the expansion of the European Financial Stability Facility, which means more money for the European recovery. Um, as their market continues to um, show weakness. Not much going on on the corporate news. We do have earnings starting, uh, I believe, October 11th, so still not a week off or so. Um, we did show an increase here for our second quarter GDP, 1.3% instead of 1%. Overall, you can see not a lot happened this week. So uh, a lot of the uh, economy woes of Europe kind of drove the market this week. And, you know, we need some more catalysts to kind of over, overcome what the weakness of both Europe and the U.S. economy. And so as we go to look at and see what's coming up for this upcoming week, we can see that no earnings. Again, earnings start October 11th. But we do have some uh, p potential movers with ADP and the employment situation this week. And Bernanke speaking on Tuesday. Um, and, you know, we don't know which way the market is going to respond to these reports, but they definitely can move the market. As we go back and, and retest some of these lows from uh, August, um, where we have bounced before, if those reports are interpreted good, we can see some nice bounces. Otherwise, if we break them, uh, we could certainly make new lows for 2011. Uh, let's uh, pull up the charts and take a look. So here we are looking at a daily chart of the S&P 500, and as we just said, we see that the market has made its way back down to our support area that we've been testing since uh, August. And so as we do have a couple economic catalyst reports this week, you know, it'll be interesting to see if we once again bounce at this 1120 range or if we uh, finally break through and move lower. We can see that uh, for the most part, you know, there is room to go lower on indicators. Um, they've kind of been ranging as the market has ranged. I mean, again, we're seeing 1120 on the bottom and 1200 at the top. We broke through it a couple times, but 1200 basically is the top. And so uh, we need to see some volume. We need to see a catalyst that's going to break us out of this range. As they say, trade it until it breaks. Now, when we zoom out a little bit, to get a, uh, a longer term view, we can see that we have a 200 on a weekly uh, that's um, working out here. But look at this hammer here on a weekly. Uh, certainly not good. And of course, again, it's right at support. And we are closing below the 200 moving average. Here, the indicators pretty much have hit the, the oversold level. We'll zoom out one more time to the monthly just to see where we would go if we do break. Here, once again, we can see 200 moving average holding up as support here and right where we are now. So again, that's that's some, some comfort for our bulls. Indicators have plenty of room to head lower though on the monthly. And if we do break the 20 moving average, if we do, I'm sorry, 200, 
And if we do break support, you can kind of see that our next level is around 1040. It's probably where we will head if we continue to, to head lower. Switching over to the NASDAQ. Going back to the daily. Zoom in for a little bit. The same range bound, double, triple tops. Uh, what is different here on the NASDAQ is that here are our August low. But we've been basing uh, at 2400 on the uh, NASDAQ instead of the August lows. So we haven't quite made it all the way down. Of course, we know that the uh, S&P 500 is down 10% compared to the 5% uh, of the Dow and the, what was it, 8% for the NASDAQ. So, um, you know, we need to start watching this 2400 price level uh, with a run down to 2330 if we break 2400 on a daily indicators are weak but they're not quite oversold yet on a weekly zooming out will the 200 be there again like we saw on the on a s p 500 well it's there but look how level it is it's not really going anywhere so that's showing the range bound of the market a much stronger uh hammer inverted hammer on the weekly uh the 20 to 50 moving hours acting as resistance We'll zoom out one more time and hit the, the monthly. And we can see the 50 moving average trying to hold up as support. Uh, and so we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll definitely have to see. Let's take a look at some of our market leaders to see what they're telling us about the market. As we look at our market leaders, we're starting off with Apple. And Apple, we can see... Um, it's not in the range that the market was in. Uh, it certainly broke out and made a new high here, but we've fallen off 20, 40 points or so. And we can see on our uptrend line, we'll zoom out a little bit, and we can see this uptrend line from June is where we're basing now along with the 50 moving average. So Apple, to me, is sitting um, at support, in a, a downtrend at support. Um, and, and look at this 15-minute chart. I mean, you can just see how far it's gone down. Point of control at 400. Um, Apple, I don't want to see, I can't even say sideways. It's down at support. Moving on to Amazon. Amazon. No, we broke through a little bit of support here at 219. Um, sideways, we were moving sideways. You could say it's sitting at support. Um, uptrend line in here has been broken. Amazon, although I, I would say sideways to down, sideways to down. Uh, we've got Google. Google sideways at support. Um, Got our point of control here at 521 that we would have to get above and toward and toward uh, move higher. And you can kind of see that the top of our range is around 550. So Google is sideways. So we've got two kind of sideways, one sideways to down, um, and Apple is down at support. Uh, what about Goldman Sachs? Goldman Sachs is just flat out down. Um, making new lows each time after touching the 20 moving average as resistance. So looks like we'll probably re retest 91. If we do start switching around, this is one to consider as financials will lead us higher. What about Netflix? Netflix is a real interesting story. Keep in mind, uh, July 14th, 13th here, we made a high of 306. Three, I'm sorry, 304. And look where we are today, 113. Almost 200 point drop there in the past three months. Um, you know, some say in, in uh, response to the, to the new pricing model of DVD costs, streaming costs. Uh, just in the last month here, 100 point loss off of that. So uh, that's really interesting. I mean, Netflix was the darling, but look at that drop. Look at that drop. Netflix down. Gotta say it, Netflix is down. 
Um, and finally, what about Priceline? Priceline definitely uh, sideways at support, sideways to down at support. So what we're seeing is as the market, the S&P 500 and NASDAQ were at support price levels, um, and as we come into the catalyst of this week, um, uh, the, uh, our industry leaders, they're also sitting at, at um, support, key support price levels, and some of them are actually down, pulling us lower. So we'll see if these catalysts can move us higher. As we move on to some of our market sentiment indicators, we're looking at the dollar. Made a beautiful move here over for the month of September. Month of September was great for uh, the dollar. We went basically from 73 up to about 79. Um, but now we're starting to go get a little sideways action in here. Uh, be interested to see what happens as we pull all the way back into the 20 moving average. Um, we can see that our point of control is all the way down here at 78 and if we get below 78.86 we start to get in some light volume for us to move back lower but overall dollar strong we've got resistance we got 500 here we've got 79 as a resistance level uh, which we're just above sort of be support and then we said this next range here takes us all the way up to 81 Moving on to gold, which is basing at 1600. We can see again that basing at 1600, the wick off of the 200 moving average here. And now we're just trying to decide what's going to happen. And of course, the economy helps with that. Strong dollar, a uh, little weak for gold, uh, strong dollar, weak for the market. Look at our point of control. We can see we're snaking around uh, 1618 for our point of control. And we need to get above 1630. Uh, even 16, yes, yeah, 1630 to get into our next 20 point range to get up to 1650, 1660. Um, and that kind of works, you know, just, you know, as we put in this doji, getting above there. But overall, we're basing 1600, going sideways, nice pullback. Um, not ready to go bullish yet, but we'll have to, again, maybe the jobs report, some more economic data will give us an insight on which way gold is going to go. And we'll finish off with crude oil. Also range bound at the lower end of its range down here at 78. And um, it's going to be interesting. You can see the wicks we have here, which we have here, which we have in here. And we're basically approaching that 78 level. So if we don't bounce here, uh, where could we go? Let's scroll out and see. Hmm. You can see the support in here at 79, uh, but we closed below that today. So uh, let's draw that in. Um, if we take this and let's go out to the monthly. And we can see that really next will probably be 71, 71 range if we continue to move lower. As we come into our education spotlight, we are continuing our discussion about trading plans. And one of the most overlooked aspects of trading certainly is actually developing a trading plan. But the second part that I would say is overlooked is the reviewing your trading. You know, so an important part of any trading is that postmortem of every trade. That's where we take the time to look at the trade. You know, things that I like to write down, of course, are the time. So we know we can start to see if there's times that we shouldn't be trading. What was the actual setup? Was it a breakout? Was it um, some indicator? Whatever you believe are trading setups, fine. Um, what was the, the risk? What was the reward? How much heat did I take? What was the potential profit? All these little things you need to write down so you, you know when you just begin to assess the current market uh, conditions and whether or not you need to make adjustments, bigger stops, smaller stops, longer targets, smarter targets, all those things, 
you have to have a journal. You have to have something that you can go back and, and base upon in order to make changes. You just can't make changes because of a feel. You got to make changes based upon documentation. As you guys know, we always talk about the importance of documenting, documenting your trading plan and your trading system. You know, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We have a page on Facebook, Are You Financially Literate? We still have our free five part video course where we help you develop your own high probability trading setups. We kind of give you a framework for what is important as you develop your own. We hope that that will give you a gauge as to who we are as coaches and how we can help you one on one develop a personalized training plan. We can review and we can begin to document and we can make the adjustments to make you uh, a successful trader, put you on the path to being a successful trader. We have our high probability trading course. Again, it's not the thousands and thousands of dollars that you see out there. We have it at a very affordable price because uh, it's important to know the information, but we believe getting that trader's mindset, which we can do through coaching, but this is a great way to get yourself started in uh, the foundations of trading. It's broken down into three courses. The introduction to trading, where we go over technical analysis, chart patterns, money management, trading plan components is a second series, and again, what how should you frame the market and then we go over some specific trading setups 20 free trades with our futures broker in addition they have a today margin as low as three hundred dollars and of course if you're looking for chartings uh, not just charts but if you want to scan the market and to find those latest moving stocks works on any browser works on both PCs and Macs this is the one for you but again it's all about the trader's mindset and having the ability to pull the trigger on a trade day after day after day, robotic, um, and allowing feel and intuition to come in to what your existing plan is. And we at Move Over Mike can help you develop that trader's mindset so you can implement your plan on a consistent basis. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.